Okay, well, this is Dr. Morton, uh, and this is a recording for Monday, the 9th of November. Hard to believe that. Uh, let's take a quick look at the syllabus. So we're, uh, here we are, and let's see, I'll shrink myself down here a little bit, if I can do that. Yeah. So here we are on week 12, which is pretty amazing. Hard to believe that the semester is going this fast. Um, so... Uh, so what we're going to cover today will be Unit 14, as the syllabus says, and um, this will be, I think it's actually, it's not video 26, I think it's actually, uh, I think it's 28 for some reason, um, and we, uh, which is kind of, I, well, I guess that's right, we did a few more videos on some of the weeks when we were going to do, uh, uh, do the project presentations. So homework nine, we delayed it till tonight. So if you haven't done it yet, make sure you get it turned in by tonight at midnight. And don't forget, homework 10 is due Wednesday night. And that, that happened because we extended homework nine because it was there was a mistake on Blackboard. The syllabus has said the, you know, that it was due on the 6th for a long time, but, but the, the turn-in link on Blackboard said the 9th. So some people were not sure and anyway so I changed it to the ninth so nobody would feel like they were pushed but it did push it up against uh, homework 10 these homeworks are not usually as difficult as some of the other ones all right today we're going to talk about 14 and um, so we'll just dive into it here so uh, what we're going to cover in 14 let me just shoot this over a little further um, is uh, we're going to cover um, uh, basically how to go from a problem statement to to develop a, a state graph and so hopefully that'll hopefully that won't be uh, hopefully that'll work really pretty well we'll see all right so um, we're gonna do two things we're gonna do a sequence detector problem uh, and then we'll do this complex pattern detector uh, so a couple of just exa good examples and I'm gonna try and work a bunch more of these than than uh, are covered directly in the book um, so here's the sequence detector, um, and let's see, I think I'm off of all the print. Yeah, that's good. So here's the problem statement. So we have, uh, and let me show you. So we have, uh, it looks like this. We have a black box, and there's a clock. We have an input X and an output Z. Now this is this is the most prototypic example of, of the typical problem we're going to deal with, where we have an input, Maybe one input. We 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 may do some with multiple inputs, but but uh, multiple inputs really complicate them quite a bit, um, and we want to keep them so you can still solve them with uh, KMAP. So typically we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna usually have just one input, uh, but there's really not that much difference. It's just more complicated, and uh, or more details maybe is a better way to put it. Uh, we we will almost always have a clock uh, for these. Uh, sequential designs you, they you pretty much you, you don't in theory you don't have to have a clock but in practice we almost always have a clock uh, and that's because it's it's difficult to get all the various parts of of a system to talk to each other in a in a predictable way for instance you can see here we we usually come up with a typical input sequence and we and we just write it here and then we try and show what the what the correct output sequence would be well, how does the how does this black box know when the next input's coming in if there's no clock? And so that that's a real problem, and that's that's a real world problem because that's true in every system. And so when we want to pass a series a string of inputs into a system, we kind of have to have a clock to know when each input is there. It's not like somebody hands us a you know a piece of paper or a ticket or a packet. Uh, it's it's just a wire with voltage levels, so um, so we do need a clock to, to coordinate almost all the time. All right, so back to the description. So we have an output Z, and it and Z is zero unless we get a sequence on the input X of one zero one. And actually, we're we really going to read it from this direction. The first item that would come in would be a one followed by a zero and then another one. So when we see that sequence, then we're going to make z equal 1. z equals 1 for the detected sequence. 
And then when the second one is detected in the sequence, the network doesn't uh, doesn't reset. So so what happens in this case, we could have overlapping targets. So if you got an, an input of 10101, we would call that two discreetly separate targets, even though they share a one in common. And we'll see that in, in a minute in our example. We're going to use a melee network. Now remember, our two types of of machines or networks are more and melee. And the melee, uh, we we have we have the the outputs are associated with the links and not with the nodes. Whereas in the more, the outputs are fixed to each state, which the nodes represent the states. So the outputs are connected to the nodes in a more and the links in a melee. And we're told not to reset after we've detected a target because that one could be the first item in the next sequence, overlapping sequence. All right. So let's so we'll we'll do the little uh, we'll do this little thing where we see a, a typical sequence. And here, let me show you. So if you look at this, you'll see that we're coming along. We get zero, so we output a zero because we have no target. We get another zero. We output a zero. We have no target. We get a one. We output a zero. Now we get a 1. We still don't have a target, so we output a 0. We get a 0. We have now the first two items in a possible target, but we still don't have the third item, so we don't output a 1. We output a 0. And then, boom, we get the 1. Now we output a 1, because now we do have a target. And then we get another 1, so that's not a... That's not... You know, we're not on another target now. So we're starting basically we're starting over and then we get a zero we output a zero a zero output a zero then we get a one we output a zero then we get a zero we output a zero and then we get a one boom another target then we get a zero and then another one so boom that is a second target so as you can see one zero one zero one turns into two targets if you have told the uh, the designer that the nets not supposed to reset now if it was supposed to reset then that one would not be the first one in a new series. It would be the end of that series, and we'd have to see another one to start a new series. And we would not we would not allow overlapping targets, but in this case we do. And so so we have to pay attention. Okay, so let's see how. Let's do our state graph. Now the way we do state graphs, at least the way I do them, is I always start with the initial state. And usually for our states, we usually use S for state, and we add a subscript of 0, 1, 2, 3, depending on what state it is. So S0, S1, S2, S3, those would be our four states, or, or however many states we need. In this case, we're not told how many states that we, that we should be using, so we just have to figure it out. Uh, and we always want to use the minimum number of states if we can. Uh, and you'll see some, pro we'll do some problems where, and, and some, uh, there's, a, there's a chapter in the book on state reduction, some techniques you can use to try and and simplify your problem if possible. All right, so we're going to start in state S0, and there's state S0. And now, because we only have one input, but we do have one input, so we need we need so we need two to the one or two paths out of every node. So we have to count for two paths. The reason we have to count for two paths is that we have two possible conditions on our input. Our input put our input x could be a zero and our input x could be a 1. So we have to account for what we do on both of those possibilities. Now, when we're constructing a state graph, we're basically figuring this out in real time. We're basically figuring this out in our head. And I'm not sure how to teach you how to do this. I think the only real key is to just do it some and see if you can kind of get good at it. This is one of those skills where some people are good at it and some people aren't. And um, you can... If you're not particularly good at it, we're going to do simple enough problems. You should be able to train yourself to, to be good to do those problems. But, uh, but f for those of you f who find this kind of, a, kind of a natural skill, great. You should do fine with this. Uh, but everybody needs to do a little practice. Okay, so here we are on S0. Two possibilities. Our input X is 0 and our input X is 1. If our input X is 0, and we're going to write a red number for zero and a blue for the output because remember the outputs are associated with the links notice we don't have any output in the actual node here so so two possibilities one is we get a zero and obviously we'll we'll output a zero because we have not detected the target 
and we're going to stay in S0 because until we get that first one, we really don't have to remember anything because where we are is we've detected nothing of a possible 1, 0, 1 sequence. Okay, now if we get a 1, that's different. We have now detected the first item in our sequence. So we're going to go to node S1. And we're going to output a 0, but our input is a 1. So when our input's a 0, we stay here. When our input's a 1, we go there. Now we've accounted for two paths out of each out of this node. Now we have to count for two paths out of S1. Now if we get a 0, that would clearly drive us to S2, because that would mean we have the first two items in our possible target. We still output a 0, the blue, because we have we haven't uh, we haven't detected the target yet, but we are in a position. If the next input's a one, then we are going to have a target. All right. But if we're in S one and we get another one, what should we do? Well, should we go back to zero and say we don't have anything detected? Well, no, because we still have a one detected, and we can just sit here, waiting for the next zero, waiting for that 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 zero to give us the second item as long as we're getting ones in this position. So so what we do is we we on a one we stay here but we output a zero which means we haven't detected a target yet but we but we are still we still have detected the first item of our possible um, sequence. Okay? So that's really important. Now here we are in S2. Now there's two possibilities in S2. One possibility is we get a 1, and that's going to be a target. But where should we go if we get a 1? Well, remember, we just looked at an example in our trial sequence where, where if we get 1, 0, 1, yes, we detect a target, we output a 1. But it also could represent the first one in the next sequence. So we're going to go to S1 on a 1. Where do we go on a 0? Well, the sequence 1, 0, 0 is nothing. So we're going to have to go to S0, which shows we, we basically have no item in our sequence anymore. All right, so on a, Z, on a 1, we're going to output a 1 in blue, and we're going to go to S1. But on a 0, we're going to go to S0, and we'll output a 0. Now, now we have two paths out of every node, and we have basically accounted for all the possibilities that we can think of. So now that we've done that, we have a completed state graph. And we only needed three nodes to do it, S0, S1, and S2, which correspond to three different states. So three states, three nodes. And then uh, notice the only place where we actually output a 1 is right here on this link. Now again, remember, for the melee, our outputs are on the links. But for a more, our links won't have outputs. The nodes will have outputs. And, and usually a melee requires more nodes, typically. I'm sorry. A more requires two more nodes. The melee is usually more efficient, but the melee has a problem. And the problem is that in a melee network, you do have to be careful not to read the output until the next input is comes in and is good. And then you can read the output. So you should read the output in a melee right before the clock. And in a more, you can read it after the clock edge plus a small propagation delayed. And then any time after that, uh, for until the next clock edge, the output should be good because they only depend on the state of the flip-flops. And the flip-flops are clocked. They only change on the clock. I mean, they, there might be sets and clears, but those are going to be asynchronous events uh, usually uh, at the, you know when we're initiating things. Okay, so complete a state graph. Now what we can do, this, the second step in our design process is to extract this information into a state table. So that's what we do. We have three states, S0, S1, S2. We have one input x. So our next state column, we have the desired next state if x equals 0, and the desired next state if x equals 1. And then we have our present output. Now notice on a, on a melee, you have two well, if you have one input, you have two output columns in your melee. If you have two inputs, you'd have four, and etc. So, whereas in a more, we would only have a single column because the output is directly connected with the state. But here, it's not connected with the state. It's connected with the state plus the next input. And these columns represent the next x input. Given that we're in state 0, we get the next x, and then that should set things up when the clock edge hits after this input's good, that should send us to state S0. And so that's how this works. 
Now, now that we have our state table, what is the next thing to do? Well, the next thing to do is we have to encode our states with flip-flops. Since we have three states, what would be the minimum number of flip-flops we could use to cover three states? Well, with one flip-flop, we can cover two states, but three states is too many for one flip-flop, so we need at least two flip-flops. With two flip-flops, we could cover up to four states. We only have three, so we're going to have one state that'll be a don't care state. And that'll help us a little bit with our K-maps to maybe get some additional simplification. All right. Now, what about our... So let's do the transition table. Now, it turns out you can encode the states in with two flip-flops. Uh, believe it or not, I think there's 27 different ways you can do it. I, I find that hard to believe. But that is, I think, the truth. Um, but in any event, of those ways... Uh, there's only a few that give actual truly different results. And, and there's, so there's three different non-equivalent ways you can assign it. We're going to see this in one of our chapters coming up. But we're just going to do straight binary. We're going to code state 0, 0, 0 with our two flip-flops. We're going to code state S1, 0, 1, and we'll code state S2, 1, 0. And then 1, 1 will be a don't care. Now, we could make S2 1 1 or we could reverse the order however we wanted that's fine but uh, but we're only gonna but we're just gonna do 0 1 2 and make 3 the don't care state okay now the way this works out then we need two flip-flops and we normally use letters for the flip-flops so we're gonna call our flip-flops A and B and uh, A will be the higher order and B will be the lower order and so A and B will be 0 0 for state S 0 0, 1 for S1, 1, 0 for S2. And then the 1, 1 condition will be a don't care. All right. Where we see states over here, we have to put in the same coding, the, the correct coding. So here we go. So um, let me move me. So here's our, here's our state uh, substitution. So it's A and B. And for, it, for S0, it's 0, 0. For S1, it's 0, 1. For S2, it's 1, 0. And then 1, 1's a don't care. So we order these in binary order over here. 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we have, for X equals 1, we, for, sorry, for X equals 0, we were going to S0. Here we would do S2. Here S0. And then for X equals 1, they're all S1's. So the x equal 1 column is going to be 0, 1, because that's the coding for state S1. Here is going to be S0, which is 0, 0. Here's going to be S2, which is 1, 0. And here's S0 again. And then these are don't cares. And our output, the only place we have a 1 is right here, where we're in state S2. And we get a 1. That completes our, that completes our target. That's a 1, 0, 1. So we output a 1. And everywhere else, we're outputting zeros. And then we have the don't cares. All right, now we're ready for our k-maps. Now here are the big the big question when you do the k-maps. In order for you to do these correctly, you should always ask yourself what is or what what is uh, what sorry what are the independent variables? What are the variables that have to be on the k-map? Now because we we're doing a melee. The, we're going to do a map for the A flip-flop input. We'll do a map for the B flip-flop input. And we'll do an output map. In this case, because it's a melee, the output map also has a variable X involved in it. So it will be a three-variable map, as will these. So what are the variables going to be? They're going to be our input X plus our two flip-flop states, A and B. We will put X at the top, and we'll put A and B down the side. And we'll do that for our flip-flop A input, our flip-flop B input, and our output for Z. And then that will give us the equations we need to build this sucker. All right, so let's, let's do the K-maps. So here's our A map for the, and oh, I, I didn't mention, but we're going to use D flip-flops for this. So because we're using D flip-flops, we don't need any extra columns over here for the D flip-flop input because the next state columns will work. Now, I want you to notice one thing. So this column here represents the A flip-flop value. This column here represents the B. This column here represents the A 
and this column represents the B. And here, uh, there's just A and that these 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 are these these are for the output Z. Okay, so so we want this column here and this column here in our A map, and we want the rightmost column here and the rightmost column here in our B map. So that's where they come from. You have to remember to flip the the rows and the and and uh, yeah you have to remember to flip the rows. All right. So here they are, and um, you can see we the don't cares help us a little bit here. It helped us a lot. This this uh, this map is just B plus. This map is X prime B, and this map we can loop these two together and get Z equals X A. So those are our those are our solutions. So our our the the D input for our B flip flop our D sub B is just B. Or sorry, is just X. I can't even read. It's X. And here our D sub A input for the A flip flop is X prime B. And that's all there is. And then the, their output is just X A. All right. And here's our network. This is what the circuit would look like. We have we have our x prime b term here going into d sub a, and our d sub b is just x, and our output is x a. And that's all there is to it. Pretty pretty straightforward. And if you built this and you sent in, you had a clock that synchronized the input of x. Anytime you put in a one zero one, z should light up, and all the rest of the time z should be zero. All right, now we could do this same problem with a more. Let's do that. So we'll start, we'll do our state graph just like we did. So here's our state graph. We start with S0. Oh, now look, our outputs are now in our node. So the Z is zero. And then our link just has a single value on it, which represents the X. So there's no zero slash zero. There's just a zero here because the outputs are not associated with the links, they're associated with the nodes in a more. All right, so on a zero, we're gonna stay here. On a one, we're going to S1, just like we did. Notice we still output a zero even in S1, and we go there on a one. Now in S1, if we get a zero, we should go to S2 and still output a zero. But if we get a one, we should stay here. But, but anytime you're in this node, you're gonna output a zero. You're not gonna pattern anything else. All right. Now we're in S2. So if we get a one, that's a target. Now, in order to make this work for the output, we have to have a dedicated known node that has a one for the output. So that's gonna be S3. Oh, okay, well, and if we get a zero, we're going back here. So we put the zero there. But if we get the one, we're going over here. And so here's the one, we're going here, and we're outputting a one. Because remember, the outputs are associated with the, with the node. So we have to have a special node just for our output one uh, in this case. And then on the other hand, if, we're, uh, if we get a, uh, sorry, so from now from S3, if we get a one, we can go back here to S2. Where we have... Uh, no, that's, uh, okay, I'm confused now. Oh, if we get a zero. Yes, yeah. So one of the things that's a little bit confusing. So in S3, we don't go to S1 to remember that we have a one because S3 is, is, is a node where we have a one. So S3 means we, we had a target, but it's also the first one and a possible next target. That's the difference between the more and the melee. Notice the, the melee, we only use three total nodes, zero, one, and two. But in this one, we have to have a, a fourth node in order to have a node that has the actual target value coming out. So we've already detected our first one in the next sequence. If we get a zero, now we have both the first one and the zero, so that's why we go to S2. And then if we get another one, we have another target. But if instead of a zero, coming out of S3, if we get a one, then we should go up to S1 because now we're, we don't have the first two items, we just have the first one. 
And so that's why we would go there. All right, hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you can see all that. Okay, so um, yeah, so any questions? So here's, now we take this information and we extract it to a state table. And there's our state table. Now notice here, our output does not have, does not have two columns because it doesn't depend on the input X. The output only depends on what state we're in. And that's why we have to have a special state where we have a one. So for that reason, it always takes more hardware to implement a more machine or a more network. And it takes less hardware typically always for a melee and sometimes a lot less. But there is the problem that a melee is a little more complicated to make sure you read it at the right time and don't get a false output. And you, again, you have to read it right before the clock. All right, now we're going to code their states just like the with with two flip-flops but in this case we're going to code them a little differently we're going to code them zero 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 one 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 zero now the reason you you could consider doing this uh is because when you extract them uh you're gonna you're you you can you can take them straight out and you don't have to flip the rows you still have to remember to well you don't have to flip columns in this anyway it's a three variable output but but you definitely but this will help you maybe not flip the rows because you've 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 assigned the states in a non-binary order that happens to match the truth that came out. And so you can do that if you want. It's, it's, it's a totally legal thing to do. So if you want to do it, great. And if you don't, that's fine too. Then you just have to remember when you extract the, the, the ones and zeros into the KMAP, you do have to flip the bottom two rows. All right, so now we can substitute in our, our flip-flop coding. All right, we call it flip-flop state assignment. We'll, we'll assign, we'll substitute that for all the states. We'll substitute it for S000. We'll do it here, but also here and here. We'll substitute in 01 for S1. We'll do it here, here, and there. And we'll substitute in 11 for S2, here and there, and 10 for S3, uh, there. So boom, we do that. And here's our, here's our transition table. And now all we have to do is extract it. Now notice this. What are the what are the variables? So our variables are our two flip-flops A and B and our one input X. So the variables are X, A, and B. For the for the for the D for the D sub A and D sub B flip-flop inputs. But what about our output? Our output doesn't in, doesn't count on X, so our output only is a two variable K map. And it only, you know, the only variables involved in the output are A and B. X is not directly involved. It's only indirectly involved. And that is what makes it a more. Okay. All right. So now here's our K-map. And let's see. Oh, I guess I didn't. So this one has one, two, three separate terms. Notice we didn't have don't cares because we had four states. Here you have three terms as well. And here you just have one, one, so you've got this, just one term. Notice, here's, and then here's our hardware. Oops, yeah. So notice that the output function is z equals a, b prime. z equals a, b prime. No x. No x is involved in that output. That's because it's a more. And there, there should never be an, uh, an input variable in our output equation in a more. But in Amelia, it's really common to have it there. In fact, if it doesn't, your your more just turned into a melee. <laughs> All right, and um, then our our the a the input for the a flip flop, which is the d input, we call it d sub a because it belongs to flip flop a, and d sub b, or we label it b a plus here next state of a b plus here next state of b. These are pretty complicated. So now look at our hardware. Boom. That is a lot more complicated than the more hardware we just did. So, you know, so which one should you do? Well, it depends. Uh, with the more network, we we had to use four. We had to use four states, and there's a lot more hardware. But 
our our reading of our output equation is a lot easier because we don't have to protect against a, a, a false output. In this case, with this setup, Z could actually glitch down uh, between clocks and, and be indicating something false before the next X comes in. Uh, now, that might not be a problem, or it might be. Uh, and you might have to have some circuitry here when you're going to actually read Z. Because if you read it at the wrong time, you could get a wrong value. So Moore's are, Moore's are more stable because they don't have that issue, but they take more hardware. And Mealy's are, are a little more agile and light, but uh, get by with fewer states and less, le usually a lot less hardware. But you have to exercise some real caution about when you read the output. And look at all these inputs. A prime, B, X prime, a, B prime, X prime, A, B, X, A, B, yeah, A, B, X, A, B prime, A prime, B, and A prime, X. And here's our clock, two R gates, and these are pretty complicated input equations. All right, so here's how we do these things. We start with a problem definition, and that problem definition tells us how, how it's supposed to work. Now it may be a, it may be a, you know there may this is where if there's any ambiguity in what what the contractor want what the customer wants you better you better resolve it better make sure you identify that confusion and put it out on the table in form of questions and get the get the customer to commit to which interpretation they want to go with so that then when it then when they're disappointed you can say well we built what you spec'd. And if you want to change it, that's fine. We'll be happy to do that, but it's going to cost you a little more money. Um, all right. So anyway, so you have the problem definition that tells what the output should be given certain inputs, and also how many you know what the states are and what 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 the what your network has to actually uh, remember. And then uh, then we we do our state graph. Usually that's what we do. That's usually what I do first. For the problems we'll have in this course, uh, I always want you to construct a state graph. Uh, there might be problems where the state table would be a better way to go, but not in this course. We then want to try and reduce the state table to the, 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 to the minimum number of states. Uh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. In Chapter 15, we're going to uh, look at ways you can do that. So that's coming up. Um, then we determine how much, how, so now we know if we've, maybe we've reduced a few, eliminated a few states or found some equivalent states. So we've gotten rid of a few states. So great. Now we can see how many flip-flops do we need? Maybe we've gotten rid of, maybe we went from 10 to seven or eight so we can get by with three when we were looking at possibility of having to have four flip-flops. And we will talk about some guidelines for making flip-flop state assignments. Uh, and we'll, we'll cover that in chapter 15 as well. All right, so now once we assign, decide how we're going to assign the flip-flops, then, uh, then we're going to substitute in the flip-flop coding for each state into our state table, which turns it into a transition table. And, uh, and then we'll plot the next state maps, and if we had other flip like T or JKs or whatever, then we would have extra columns. We'd have to work those out too. Uh, but as long as we're using Ds, all we need are the, the next state maps and we're good. And then we uh, simplify using the K maps and we build our flip-flop input equations and our output equation and boom, we have a uh, device. And then we check it to see if it's going to work right. Usually we, we uh, Usually we do it with computer simulation these days. Uh, in the old days, they'd just build it and then see if it worked. You could do it by hand, but it's much better to do it with a computer simulation. And you, you all saw, you, you had to use a logic simulator and put in your logic and see if it worked. All right, now we're going to start a, another uh, design. Um, and this is a little more complex. This one involves um, this one involves uh, two targets instead of just one, and and it also it's a little different problem. In this problem, 
the network does reset after each group of four inputs. So we get four inputs. You either have a target or you don't. And we reset. And the next input is the next uh, is always the first input in the next group of four. So this is a unique, uh, th this type of problem where it resets after a fixed number of inputs uh, allows you to do a different type of state reduction called eliminating redundant states. For any network, we can eliminate equivalent states, but that requires an implication table, and we'll show you how to do that in Chapter 14. But redundant states are a little, little, little easier to do, and this is the kind of problem where, you're, where you can identify redundant states. All right, so we're going to reset after each group of four. So we're going to read in four values, reset, read in four values, and reset. Now, the sequence we're looking for is 0, 1, 0, 1, or 1, 0, 0, 1. If we get either one of these four-bit sequences in our group of four bits coming in, then that's going to be a target, and otherwise, no target. There's no such thing as overlapping targets because we always reset after every four bits. So, and we're not going to have a target till the first four bits come in. So the only time where z could uh, equal 1 would be on that fourth bit. And then when it starts, when the network resets, then z will be 0 again, and we'll just start back where we were, looking for a new target. All right, so these are the two targets. One other thing I might point out at this point that's going to become important later is if you'll notice, these two targets do share the last two bits are the same. This is 0, 1, 0, 1. And this is 1, 0, 0, 1. So the last two are the same. And that's going to allow us to, to uh, eliminate some states that are, that are redundant. Uh, so, all right, let's press on. So what we're going to do, uh, one way to approach a problem like this, is, is to not worry about uh, taking care of all possible paths out of each node. Now, how many inputs do we have? We have one input. So every node must have two paths out of it. Uh, so we have to account for that. And then uh, are, we doing a, are we doing a melee or a more? So we're doing a melee. Okay. So we, our outputs are going to be associated with our links. And so what we're going to do, we're, we're going to go down two separate paths, one for the target 0101 and one for the target 1001. All right. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so we're going to start off with our first node, S0. Now, in S0, we have nothing detected, and it's the first one of the next group of four, four, four incoming uh, uh, bits, or values for x. So x could be 0, 1. If x is 0, we're going to go over here. Oh, sorry. If x is 1, we're going to go to S1. And we're going to output a 0 because we don't have a target yet, obviously. Now if we get a zero, oh well, okay, we're going to chase down this one first. So then that gives us a one. Now our next value is zero. So now if we get a zero, we'll still output a zero, but we'll go to S2. Now if, if we get another zero, we'll go to S3 and output a zero. Now what if we do, what, when we get our next one, what's going to happen? Well, first off, it's going to be our fourth value. So, so we're instructed to go back to S0. Now, when that value comes in, if it's a 1, guess what? We have a target. So we have to output a 1. So our, our red output should be a 1. But if, if we get a 0, we still have to go back to S0, but we won't have a target. So there's our 0, and there's our uh, uh, no target. Here's our 1, and there's our target. All right, that takes care of one target, except we still got, we only have one path out here, so we'll have to add another path. We only have one path out here, we'll have to have another path. All right, so let's, now let's go on a zero, we're going to go to S4, I'll put a zero. On a one, we're going to go to S5. On another zero, we're going to go to S6. And then finally, on that final zero, we're going to either, uh, sorry, on that final fourth value, we're either going to get a 0 or 1. If we get a 1, that's a target, so we'll output a 1. If we get a 0, that's not a target, so we'll output a 0. But in either case, we start over. 
because that's our fourth value and we're supposed to reset on the fourth value. Now, um, we now we go back and we take care of the other uh, options that we haven't dealt with. So for S0, we do have two paths out, so that's good. That's done. What about S1? We only have one path out, and that's when it's 0. So we need to do something when it's 1. Well, when it's 1, there's, a, there's already no chance that we're going to get a target, because that would be 1-1. One, one. So that's not a target. So now, but we have to read in the other, the other values. We have to read in two more values so that we can read in four values and reset, even though we don't have a target. So we have to create another node, and that's just kind of a useless node. And on a, on a one, we're going here when we're chasing down this path, but here we wanted a zero to go, we wanted a zero uh, sorry, we want a 1 to go on here, so on a 0 we're going to go to S7. In both cases we'll output a, a red 0 because we have a detect, we're not going to detect a target. And then from 7 we have to go to 8, and then from 8, well, from 8 we go all the way back up to, to, uh, uh, to S0. But what if we're down in S2 and we don't get a 0, we get a 1? Well, now we don't have a sequence, so we have to go to S8. And here, what happens if you don't get the last little sequence, 0, 0? Well, you're going to have to go to S8 and still, and then the next time you'll go back to S0. So that, that creates, that takes care of two paths out of X1, two out of S2, two out of S3. They're, they're the same path, but, but we go there on either one. Two paths out of... Uh, well, uh, on S7, uh, regardless of what we get, uh, oops. Oh, this is a reduced one, I think. So, yeah, so on S7, no matter what the input is, we're going to S8, and we're outputting zeros. And then at S8, no matter what the input is, we're going back to, uh, uh, we're going back to uh, S0, and we're outputting a zero because we, we don't have a, in neither case do we have a, uh, a target. Okay, now if you look at this, you can see we might be able to salvage some nodes out. And look how many we have. We go all the way up to S8, so there's nine nodes. So that's going to take four flip-flops. So it would be nice if we could reduce some states. Well, we can redo this uh, just like this. So here we have... We've gotten rid of these uh, these these center nodes. We've really put the center nodes over here. And this node, once we get 0, 1, then we have the same last two sequences of 0, 0 1, 0, 1, or 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So, the, so from here on out, it's the same. So we just go over here, and if we get a 0 and a 1, then that's going to be a target. That's the only place the target shows up. And everywhere else, we don't have a target. We just count out the next four values, and we're done. Um, so on a 1, we go here. On a 1, we go here. Uh, and then no matter what we get, we go back to S0 here. All right, so you can look at this and, and convince yourself it's a good idea. It's good. And then um, here's where we sort of tell what the nodes mean. S0 means reset or nothing detected. S1 means we've detected the first zero in our ones, we, uh, our, sorry, or we've detected the first item in our sequence, which could be a, could be a zero, but could be a one. Uh, but really S4 is where the zero is going to go. So S4 we have uh, zero, one, zero, or one, zero, zero. Yeah, 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 these, these, uh, yeah, this, these numbers don't match up. Let me fix them. All right, so you can see, um, let me go back, well, yeah, oh yeah, here, sorry. So let me just, I'll just walk you through this. So on a one, we go here, and then on a zero, we go here. On a zero, we go here, and on the final one, we go back up here and output a one. So that's that's one zero zero one target. 
on a 0, we go here. And then on a 1, we go here. Which means now we have either 1, 0, or 0, 1. We're now we're looking for the completing sequence of 0, 1. 0, 1, and we output a 1. That's another target. Everything else, we just count out four inputs and reset. So we have 1, 2, 3, reset. And then here we go, 1, 2, 3, reset, if we don't get that, that, uh, that, that second uh, element of our target, which would be 1. And then down here on this node, if we get, if we get uh, 1, 0, or we get 0, 1, but then we don't get the next sequence, which is 0, 1, we get instead of a 0, we get a 1, now we go to here, and on the next clock, we reset. And then if you're in 5, no matter what, if you're in if you're in 5, well, if you're in 4 and you don't get the 1, you get a 0 instead, that would be 0, 0. So that's not a target. So now you just go down to S5, and then S6, and then reset. And so, so this hopefully makes sense. So now if you look at the meaning... So S0 means reset. So you should always go through and think, what, am I, what do these nodes represent in terms of what they're remembering about my prior inputs? What, what, are, they, what, are, they, actually, what are they actually represent? Okay. And that's, that's, it's really helpful if you can, if you can uh, kind of figure that out. All right. So, so S0 is reset. S1 means that we got the first zero. Uh, no, got these backwards. Golly. Okay, let me fix it. Okay, now we fix it. So we get the first one. We're going to S1. And then from S1, if we continue the sequence, we'll go all the way down to S3, go back to S0, and output a 1. But if we don't, then we'll break over into this column, and we'll count out the next uh, re re um, um, the next uh count so that we get in the right number of four bits. All right, then if we get a zero, we're going to S4. That's the first one in this sequence, zero, one, zero, one. And then if we get a one, now we have the zero, one, a zero, one, and we're just looking for the second zero, one, zero, one, and we output a one. So that takes care of both targets. And everything else finds its way over here, and we just count out. Uh, so if in S4 we don't get that next one, we get a zero instead, so that's so that's our first value, second, third, and on our fourth value, we go back to S0 and we output zeros. Everything else is a red zero except this one one here. And now we do our transition table. I'm sorry, our state table. Then we substitute it in our flip-flop state assignment like this. We have three flip-flops to assign now. So we, we, we just do straight binary order, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we have 7 for a don't care. We substitute those in, and we have ABC in their flip-flops. Here, these columns are ABC for when X equals 0. This is ABC for when X equals 1. And, uh, and then we have our outputs. Notice we have two columns for the outputs because it is, a it, it is a melee, and we have to have them. And then we have a few don't cares. Now, when we go to our K-maps, what's the question we need to ask? What, what are our variables? Well, we have flip-flops. Uh, A, B, C, and input X. So we have four, four flip-flops. I mean, four independent variables. Three flip-flops, one input. And that's the same for our output. Our output K map is going to be a four-variable map also. So now we have f four maps. One for the flip-flop A input, which we we talk about A plus. But we'll also talk about the, the D input, and we call it D sub A because it's for the A flip-flop. And then we'll have D sub B for the B flip-flop and D sub C. And so when we form our K map, the A column will be this column right here, and the B and the A column over here. So that'll be because our, our truth table is going to have 16 rows because it's a four variable truth table. So it'll be uh, row A, B, sorry, row 1, 2, or row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 0 through 15. 
and we'll do the same thing for B. B will be the middle the middle item in each column. I'm sorry, these columns are not lined up correctly. Um, we'll fix that someday. Anyway, um, and then the C will be the last column here, both of these. And we'll take these values and we'll put them into four different K maps. One for flip flop A here, A plus. One for B plus or D sub or D sub B, A plus or D sub A. And here what here's what we have. We have A prime C prime X plus B C and A C. And then here we have one, two, three, four terms, one four variable term, one three variable term, two two variable terms. And then same thing here. And then we have um, we have our one uh, one one box for our output. There's no uh, no don't cares around, so we it's a four variable term a b prime c prime x. We always put at the top. Okay, on these maps, I I did them I did them really incorrectly. Uh, uh, I should change these, but when I first started, I kind of I made the uh, I made the axes for the for the K maps whatever I wanted, and then I realized it really confused students. So now I always do it the same. If I have a ver four variable problem like this, I'm going to make I'm going to make the higher order variable x, and then it's going to be XA at the cross the top and BC down the side. AX across the top, BC down the side. But I did AB across the top and CX down the side, and it, it was not smart because it's a whole lot easier uh, to extract it off of the K-maps if you label it the way I just described, XA, BC. But I noticed that my students this semester, uh, when they did their projects, labeled uh, their, their, some of their K-maps differently than I would have recommended. So I guess you can do whatever you want. As long as you keep track of it and get, the, get all the, the ones in the right places, you're fine. doesn't really matter. It's just that doing it the same way every time really does help. All right. So here, the, here they are. Here are the resulting uh, equa uh, expressions. And here's the circuit. What a mess. Pretty complicated circuit. But this one will do exactly what we just described. You can input four variables. It'll reset after the fourth one, and it'll output a one on that fourth one if it's a target. And it recognizes both of those two targets, one, zero, zero, one, and zero, one, zero, one. So pretty amazing, right? All right, so, uh, so I think we're pretty much done. This is kind of the review of what we just went through. I've been over it several times, but you basically take the problem and you do a state graph. You turn the state graph into a state table. Uh, then you, uh, oh, well, this is what we did. Yeah, this is just a review. All right. Um, yeah, so we're going to stop here. I think that covers unit 14. And then we'll pick it up and go from here on Wednesday. And uh, we may talk about 14 a little bit more. I can't remember actually. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we're done with 14. All right, so we'll start. I think 15 Monday. I mean 15 Wednesday. Okay, that uh, that should do it, and we will see you then on Wednesday.